In this video, I'm going to show you something unique that I've never seen anybody else do, namely to pressurize a two litre drinks bottle like this and use it to both test and clean a fuel pressure regulator and to also use it to test a Bosch fuel injector. This style of drinks bottle here with smooth top and bottom as opposed to this style which has square edges, this can actually be pressurised up to 200 psi. Now we're not going to be using pressures anything like that, we're going to be pressurising this to 30 to 50 psi and we're going to be using it as our source of compressed air. To pressurise one of these bottles, all you need is a standard car valve like this. We went along to Quick Fit and they actually gave us four of these free. There's two styles, a long one and a short one, it doesn't matter which style you use. And all we're going to do is we are going to drill a hole in the cap of the bottle and pull through this valve. To drill our hole, we used a 13 and a quarter millimeter drill because that's what we happened to have that was nice and sharp. But you might find you can also use a 13 mil drill, possibly a 14 mil drill, although I haven't tried that. Once you've successfully drilled the hole and pulled the valve through like that, all you need to do is pressurize this. And now we're going to be using this Devault uh, mobile air compressor, which is absolutely fantastic. Christmas is coming up. Treat yourself to one of these. They're amazing. Dial up the pressure you want. Hit the play button. This bottle is now pressurized to 40 psi. To get the compressed air out of the bottle, you're going to use a fitting that screws into the valve, opens the valve and then interfaces, hopefully with standard size fuel hose like this. Unfortunately, nobody seems to make a fitting with the right size barb on it for fuel hose. These smaller barbs here fit a smaller pipe. Now you can modify that to put a smaller pipe on like that and then put this inside fuel hose, that does work. These fittings are expensive. This is a silk fitting here that will cost you about £12.50 or £15, depending where you get it from. This one here is from China cost you about £4.50. A better solution is there's a guy on eBay that actually sells hose made up with that female fitting on it. With this simple arrangement here, if you were removing a spark plug or a fuel injector and you wanted to get rid of any sand and grit before you remove it, you can use this very simple arrangement here to make your own air gun. When you tighten that fitting up, you'll hear the air rushing out and that will get rid of any air and sand. And as I say, you can pressurize these bottles to quite high and PSI and obviously you can pressurize lots of them. We are interested in using our compressed air to test fuel ejectors and fuel pressure regulators so a little brass fitting like this will allow you to interface this pipe here which just cost a few pounds from eBay to standard fuel hose and then you will be able to connect fuel pressure regulators and injectors directly to the end of here and start testing them. With this very simple arrangement here, you could use this to test a fuel injector to see whether it is leaking or indeed test the spray pattern. But we are going to go one stage further than just having one valve here. We are going to drill a hole in the bottom and have two valves and that will allow us to put more pressure in without disconnecting anything else. With this super simple arrangement, I can fill this Coke bottle in this valve and then to the other valve, I can connect a fuel injector to see if it's leaking. On this particular vehicle, these Djectronic fuel injectors, they work at a PSI of 30, so we'll just pressurize the bottle up to 30. What many people don't realize is that 30 PSI of air pressure is exactly the same as 30 PSI of fuel pressure. So if you want to know whether this fuel injector is leaking, you can actually just connect it up to a Devault compressor like this, and you can actually see that that 30 PSI has already dropped down to 29.8 PSI. And what that means, if this was in the car, is that you have got fuel dripping from this injector. Now, if you want to verify that, all you need to do is dip this in a glass of water and you should see bubbles coming out. So this is a Bosch fuel injector from our parts car. And let's dip it in here and see what happens. You see the bubbles coming out there? That means this injector is leaking. So with this very simple arrangement, you can test whether your fuel injectors are leaking. You can also use this really simple setup to verify the spray pattern of your injector. Now, the only thing you should ever be spraying through your injector is fuel or injector cleaner. One of the best injector cleaners you can get is this Berryman B12 Chem Tool. And what you do is you would fill the Coke bottle partially with this here. 
and then you would turn the Coke bottle up like this. So you've got the chem tool here, then you would pressurize it to 30 PSI. So you've basically got this injector cleaner at 30 PSI down this line here. In this particular injector, you would see it slowly dripping out. But what you may find is by running Berryman B12 through the injector that you're able to stop that dripping. Now you can go one stage further with these old style Bosch injectors and connect a three volt battery across here. Now these injectors operate at three volts. Do not put 12 volts across these injectors unless you want to ruin them and spend 100 to 150 pounds on a new injector. The side of the injector here shows which is the plus terminal and which is the negative terminal. So you can just get some micro spades like this, put a bit of red wire on for the positive terminal and then connect this to a three volt lithium battery. Now this line is still pressurized with 30 PSI of air. And if I touch this on there, you hear a little puff of air coming out the end of the injector. Obviously, if I filled this with chem tool, you would see the chem tool coming out the end of the injector. So I'm now gonna move on to how to use this system here to both test and clean the fuel pressure regulator. To test what pressure our fuel pressure regulator is opening and also to test whether it's leaking, the first thing we need to do is attach the fuel pressure regulator to there. So we're gonna get some standard ethanol resistant fuel hose here that we got from Mr. Injector. And we're gonna put that fitting on there. And the other end of the fuel hose is simply gonna to connect to there. Here's our arrangement. We've got the pressurized air here going into one side of the fuel injector. The other side of the fuel injector is effectively blocked off using this fuel injector. Although we do know that this has got a slight leak. And what will happen is if we tried to pressurize this to say 40 PSI, but we'll say 35 PSI, okay? What should happen is as soon as you get to 30 PSI, which is the rating of this fuel pressure regulator, this valve here should open and this should stay steady at 35. So if we left this running and try to keep pressurizing it to 35, it would never get to 35. It would only ever get as far as 30 if this is working properly because the excess pressure would go out this line here, which on the car would lead back to the fuel tank. So let's just try that. It's gonna be a little bit loud. I've got my finger over the end of the fuel pressure regulator. If I take my finger off, you'll hear a whoosh of air. And that is the excess fuel pressure, or in this case, air pressure bleeding out through this valve. On the car, this would go back to the return tank. And you can see that this here is holding pressure at 30 PSI, which is exactly correct. Now we know in this particular arrangement that that's going to leak down slightly because the fuel injector is not sealed properly. It's got a slight leak. But if you sealed off this pipe completely, you could see whether or not your fuel pressure regulator was leaking simply by dipping that in a glass of water. And if there were air bubbles coming out of that, that's where your fuel pressure is leaking to. Now, this very simple arrangement with the Coke bottle is allowing you to test whether or not your fuel pressure is leaking. And also on these Bosch fuel injectors here, you could adjust the fuel pressure um, either higher or lower, if you undo the locking nut and screw that nut in, you would adjust the figure to higher than 30 bar if for some reason you wanted to do that. Or if it was set too high, if somebody had adjusted this previously because something on your car was not set up correctly and some mechanic had turned that bolt and turned that up to 40 PSI, which is not unusual, you could actually use this very simple setup here to reset the fuel pressure regulator without getting involved with any petrol or anything dangerous like that. This is the fuel pressure regulator from our parts car. It was very rusty when we took it off, so we sanded the rust off, sprayed it first with um, Eastwood rust encapsulator matte silver, then we went over it with Rust-Oleum and it looks pretty close to the original now. But does it work? That's the question. We're gonna use our very simple testing mechanism here to connect this up and see if it holds pressure. We've connected the parts car fuel pressure regulator. Let's pressurize our bottle there to 35 PSI and see if that valve opens up at 30 PSI. Once again, I've got my finger over the end of that. If I release it, you should hear a whoosh of air. The question is, will that 
hold pressure at 30 psi or will that just continue to leak? These fuel pressure regulators are made up of a needle valve like this and sometimes those can get dirty, they have old fuel etc on them, though we've thoroughly cleaned this one up. So we're going to put that back inside, screw it down and see if we can actually get this fuel pressure regulator to work without running anything other than air through it. Now this fuel pressure regulator is still leaking. I don't know why this is leaking. If the diaphragm is ripped or got a hole in it, then it, there's no hope for this. But if it's leaking because there's just some grit or old fuel or something stopping the diaphragm from sealing, what you could potentially do is run some of this through our bottle here and through the fuel pressure regulator to see if we can clean the inside of it. Now, nobody's never ever seen anybody try and repair one of these, but we're gonna give it a red hot go. First off, we're gonna take our B12 and we're gonna pour it in this Coke bottle here. Here's our setup. In here, we've got our water bottle filled with ChemTool and we're gonna pressurize that to 30 PSI. The injector is sealed in this spare water bottle here. We've got a three volt power supply going to it and we're gonna see what kind of spray pattern we get. Um, any overpressure will hopefully leak down here. So first of all, we're gonna see if we can just clean this injector and run some injector fluid through it. So now the moment of truth, when I just flick this switch here on and off, we should start to see Wow, that is completely clogged up, isn't it? Look at that. Wow, <laughs> that Heath Robinson actually works. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that there because that's really dirty, the first stuff that came out and just run through some clean chem tool which we can reuse. The color of that, it'll be intrigued to know if our injector still leaks after we've run this through. If you were to send your injector off to say Mr. Injector in the UK to clean this, they would get rid of all the rust, etch all of that off. They would do what's called um, backflow testing. They would put the injector in an ultrasonic bath. So what we're doing here isn't really cleaning the injector. It might be unclogging it, but it's a very basic thing we're doing however my plan is just to see if we can stop that injector leaking and by the looks of it it already has stopped leaking so we're just going to uh, run the rest of the chem tool through here and then we're going to go on to see if we can um, fix that other fuel pressure regulator when they flow test injectors they actually run the injector constantly like that now you don't want to do that unless you're actually running something through it you can see here that obviously that pressure is falling slightly, so we could repressurize this up to 30 psi if we wanted to while that's actually running. Oops. The advantage of running chem tool injector cleaner through at 30 psi is you're actually running the injectors at the correct pressure as opposed to trying to squeeze stuff through with an aerosol. We're now going to see if this leaks by just holding the tip in some water and pressurizing that back up to, without any uh, chem tool in it. But it goes without saying, when you're doing this, make sure you're wearing gloves and goggles. You do not want to get injector cleaner on your hands or in your eyes. We're going to repressurize this to 30 psi just with air now, and then we're going to clear out any residual chem tool in there, dip it in the water, see if it's still leaking. So let's just hold this in the water now. Remember, you never want to run water through an injector unless you want to ruin it and see if we've got any bubbles coming out, which we don't. So whatever it was that was clogging this injector up before is now fixed. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is not cleaning these injectors properly. We're not flow testing them or testing a spray pattern. If you want to get these properly serviced, you need to send them off to a professional injector place. This is a method for testing the spray pattern and possibly clearing any blockages, but it will not flow test 
or make sure that you've got the right amount of fuel, atomized fuel going into your engine block. We're gonna put our leaking fuel pressure regulator here now, but just remember this is still under pressure. Despite the fact the bottle isn't pressured, these lines are still under pressure. So when you take those off, there will be pressure coming out. So please make sure you wear gloves and glasses. We've got the chem tool back in here. We've got the uh, leaking fuel pressure regulator in there. We just need to put the top on, pressurize this and see what happens. When I attempt to pressurize this bottle here to 30 PSI, what I'm expecting to happen is that the valve inside there will open before 30 PSI and we'll start to see chem tool flowing through here. Now, what I'm hoping will happen is that the chem tool will dislodge any grime or grit if that's the reason why this fuel pressure regulator is leaking. As I say, if it's leaking because it's got a torn diaphragm or a hole in the diaphragm, then we can cut it open and see what's inside it. So we've pressurized that to 30, and you can see that this is leaking now. If this fuel pressure regulator was in your car, the car wouldn't be holding fuel pressure. First of all, the injectors wouldn't be operating at the right pressure. And every time you park the car up, all the fuel pressure in the lines would bleed away. You'd have a hole hard to start the car in the morning and hard to start the car if the engine was hot. So I've no idea whether this will work or not, but we're gonna give it a red hot go. So this is now a, a slow drip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pressurize this up to above 30, and that should open the valve up completely and we should see um, chem tool gushing through there. What's happening is as the pressure leaks down, that valve should slowly close until it closes completely. You can see that flow is starting to slow down. We're down to 33 PSI. That valve should close at around 30. It's 10 minutes later, the pressure's down to below 30. You can see that this is still dripping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna whoop the pressure up and we're gonna run chem tool through here a couple of times. We're gonna switch the injector and the lines over just in case it makes any difference which way the fuel is sitting or flowing. It's interesting if you look at the bottom of this bottle, how much sediment you can see that's come out of that fuel pressure regulator. Seeing the amount of grit and sediment in that plastic water bottle, it occurs to me that what I should really do is have an inline fuel filter in here to filter all of that out it is easy with hindsight and um, we've switched the leads around here and we're just gonna do that whole process again wow look at that that dripping is almost completely stopped we're at 32 bar and that was pouring out before i think we've pretty much fixed that i'm going to finish this video here that's the sand and sediment that's to come out of that fuel pressure regulator just the second or third time of running through the chem tool. You just need one of those little grains there to get stuck between the diaphragm and the sealing surface and that fuel pressure regulator would leak. I'm going to finish this video just where we got the various bits and pieces from but I'm happy how that's gone. We've successfully cleaned this fuel pressure regulator and unblocked that Bosch injector. We got that screw-on rubber hose from eBay from this guy here, GAR 1963. Um, super quick delivery and great communication, £4.70 for a length of hose. We got the little barbed fitting that goes in the end of that hose and steps it up to standard fuel pipe from these guys here, Continent Electronics, 6mm to 8mm, cost us £3.15, once again from eBay. If you're planning to replace the fuel hose on your injectors, which is a good idea if it's still the original hose, you will need this fuel hose here, 7.3 internal diameter, 13.5 outer diameter. Masterinjector.uk are the eBay trading shop for Mr. Injector where you can get uh, all the other bits and pieces you're gonna need to refurbish fuel injectors. It's not cheap, £17.50 a meter, but this is the stuff you need. If you live in the UK, you can get this Berryman's B12 Chem Tool from JB Tools, just 3 dollars